Hi everyone, I'm Matt from THKP, and today we're going to continue our look at physics-based animations in Flutter. Specifically, we're going to try to unpack the spring simulation utility they provide. So, if you watched the friction simulation video, uh, we're using a slightly modified version of the final app in that video. If you're interested to learn more about friction simulation, definitely check that out. And we also go into more detail about how we built this app up. So, if you're interested in how we got here, it might be useful to check out that video as well. There's kind of a lot going on in this app, but uh, for right now, the only things we need to know is that we have the ability to nudge the block, which is animated with a friction simulation, and we also have the ability to spring back, which is controlled by a spring simulation, the details of which are controlled by the sliders at the top of the screen. So. Let's take a look at how we are actually implementing this spring back utility. So here we have this spring back function. And so the first thing we do is we construct a spring description. The spring description controls how our block behaves when we do our spring simulation. As you can see, it accepts mass, stiffness, and damping as parameters. These correspond to the sliders we have at the top of the app over here. So each one of these parameters is configured by dragging these little sliders around. Then for our spring simulation, we use the spring description as above, and then we ask it to animate from wherever the block starts to the value of zero, which puts the block back to the left edge over here. Finally, we use the block animation controller and we ask it to animate with our newly constructed spring simulation. Let's take a quick look at the uh, definition of the block animation controller. So it is an animation controller. And if we look at how it's initialized in our init state method, we're using the animation controller dot unbounded constructor. This allows the animation controller to emit values of less than zero or greater than one, which is somewhat unorthodox for animation controllers. Okay, so we have our block animation controller, which in our spring back method, we're using to animate with our spring simulation, which is being described by our spring description. Finally, I think it might be useful to take a look at how we're using block animation controller to enable our animation. Here, we have the definition for the red block widget. We're wrapping it in an animated builder. We are passing in our block animation controller as our animation for the animated builder. And finally, we're passing in the value of the animation controller into the left parameter for this position widget. What this means is that as the block animation controller is emitting larger values, the red block is being pushed farther over to the right side of the screen. All right, so the last element of this app that I haven't really described is what this chart is representing. So basically, this shows the values that are going to be emitted by the hypothetical spring simulation that is defined by these parameters. What this chart is indicating is that the block will start all the way on the right side of the screen. It will quickly move to the zero point. It will actually bypass it a little bit, and then it'll converge back towards the zero. Let's actually take a look at this so we can see visually how, what this actually means. Pay attention to the way the red line is moving, because that should correspond to the location of the red block as time is moving. As you can see, we see that behavior where the block shoots all the way over to the right edge, overshoots a little bit, and then, and then doubles back. What's cool about the chart is that as we modify the values of these parameters, we can see the different behavior that this will allow. And so obviously, with this behavior, we'll expect this coy erratic back and forth motion from the block. So let's, let's just take a quick look at that. And that's what we see. So basically, this chart gives us a really useful way to see what the behavior of the block will be like without needing to actually simulate the whole behavior of the, of the block. Now that we've seen how we set up this spring simulation, and we understand what this chart means, I think it will be useful to try to get a more intuitive understanding of what the various parameters mean. All right, let's take a look at mass. Generally, a higher mass will mean that the block is less affected by the other parameters. So if there's a high mass, it will just converge towards the, 
towards zero without overshooting at all. But if there's a low mass, it, we, we see that it's more affected. So it's, it's being pushed back and forth by, the, by this hypothetical spring. As for stiffness, in general, it works to expand or contract the motion in time, as opposed to actually affecting how the block moves. So if you roughly have the right motion, but you just want it to take, happen more quickly or more slowly, I'd recommend either increasing or decreasing stiffness respectively. Finally, we have damping. Damping controls how quickly any oscillations will decay. If damping is zero, the oscillations of the spring will continue forever. So let's just check that out. So now it's just going on forever. We basically just have a sine wave here. Um, so if you find that you have too much oscillation going on, I'd recommend raising damping. For the last portion, I'm thinking it could be useful to try to achieve a, different, a few different kinds of behavior, just to see how this chart is a useful tool for designing the motion of elements in your app. So the first thing that we're gonna try to design is what I like to refer to as the business snapback. Essentially, we don't want any overshoot, we just want the block to snap back in a short amount of time from the right edge to the left edge. And clearly what we have here is not gonna do that for us. So as we discussed, uh, mass allows the, the, part or the block to be less affected by, by the other parameters. So I think I'm gonna turn that up. And now we have a, a nice decay, um, but as we discussed before, uh, stiffness shortens or abbreviates how long things take. So I think I might dial up stiffness as well because this also might be taking too much time. And then, and then again, the damping may, having higher damping may even pull it down even a little more. Let's see how that looks. Okay, great. So now we have our business snapback. Uh, this is a no-nonsense animation that I think uh, could be useful in something where you don't want there to be too much fanciness going on. All right, well, for the next one, uh, let's, let's try to make something a little more whimsical. Let's say we want a little bit of overshoot. We don't want to go too crazy, but, um, but we want to add a little bit of, uh, little bit of visual interest. So, um, so the first thing that I'll try is to turn down the mass because having the high mass is not going to allow real any, any uh, snapback at all. So, so as we see, we start to reduce the mass and we get that little bit of, of overshoot. We may even get a little bit of, of snapping back, uh, which we may or may not want, but uh, let's, let's give this a shot and see how this looks. Okay, this is, this is pretty good. If this slider's max wasn't two, I would probably turn damping up a little more just so we reduce the amount that it snaps back or pulls back. But, um, but this is pretty good given, given what uh, we're working with here. Finally, just for fun, I figured we could just try to make the uh, most insane uh, absolute chaos possible. So uh, I think, oh. So having a minimal mass, no damping, and stiffness to be uh, as high as possible, that really seems to uh, be the, the wildest. You know what, let's put a little bit of damping, but let's see how that looks. All right, so there you go. Here's your animation if you just want absolute chaos in your app. But there you have it. So hopefully this was a useful tour through the different parameters that are used to configure the spring simulation, in addition to actually learning about how to set up a spring simulation for your app. Thanks for checking out the latest addition to the physics-based animation in Flutter series. We're planning on having one more video in this series, which tries to pull together both friction simulation and spring simulation into an example of how you might really put it to use in, in a real world app. So keep an eye out for future posts from THKP. Thanks for checking out this tutorial. If you found this useful, give us a thumbs up. And if you're interested in seeing more, don't hesitate to subscribe.